thank you for the introduction, Antoine. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, it's important uh, nowadays to have a sort of uh, 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 red thread between our our beliefs and uh, our our work that we do, so that we we actually work on what we think it's it's good for for the, the environment and vice versa. So. Um, I will share my screen and uh, then I will start straight away uh, with my presentation. Um, I'm not finding the, the button to, to start the screen sharing. Uh, the button is below, uh, below your screen, the share screen button. Yeah, button. sorry. We discussed yesterday this, during the trial. We're all used to, uh, we're, we're using too many systems nowadays. Uh, <laughs> okay. Perfect. We, there you go. Here we go. Okay. So um, you have seen from uh, from the presentation from Jana uh, a nice overview of the the entire package of medium voltage uh, uh, reading cables that we uh, we supply under the brand name of uh, Protron cable family. Um, what I will uh, deep dive into here is uh, uh, into the Protron uh, SC. So this is uh, the cable that is uh, uh, dedicated to uh, flexible uh, connection of shore connection systems. And uh, this will open up the chapter also of the shore connection system that we will see uh, in the next presentations from the next panelists uh, uh, that kindly joined our, our discussion today. But uh, first of all, uh, to start with, uh, with my presentation, uh, I want to, to take a step back and just uh, uh, define what, what terms uh, are, are, we, uh, are we discussing today. So what is shore connection? Um, basically, for the ones that uh, do not know this, this kind of uh, technology yet, uh, it comes uh, under different names. Uh, we hear about uh, high voltage shore connection. We uh, sometimes hear about alternative maritime power. Then uh, there are people calling it also cold ironing or shore to ship power. These are all different names, uh, all, all different terms, just indicating the same technology serving the same purpose, which is to connect the ship uh, to the main grid while uh, the ship is at berthing and to uh, provide energy, uh, the energy demand uh, to the ship uh, from the grid instead of uh, using uh, the diesel engines. So the ship can shut down the diesel engines and get the, the needed power from the, from the, main, from the, the main grid. What are the advantages with this kind of technology? Of course, uh, we can, uh, or the, the, uh, the, the port operator can reduce the carbon emissions. It does uh, reduce the fuel consumption. And also, last but not least, it also reduces uh, the noise connected uh, with these big vessels that are uh, uh, polluting uh, uh, the, the air, the water, and also the, the, uh, the, the overall environment uh, of our ports nowadays. Um, so we do have a lot of different terms for the same technology, but uh, we do have also a lot of different technologies uh, when it comes to shore connection systems. Um, basically, um, I've collected here some, of, uh, some, some pictures of actual um, connections, uh, shore connection systems that employ our Proton shore connection cables. And this is just to, to, to give you a glance of the many different uh, uh, cable management systems that there are on the markets. Uh, more, uh, we will see more of these uh, in the up upcoming presentations. Um, but um, yeah, we see here how, how various this, this kind of market is. So we have uh, on, the, uh, on the top left, uh, a mobile wagon uh, with a retractable arm for cruise liners. Uh, on the uh, bottom right, we have uh, a typical reel system for used for container vessels. Uh, in the center, we have uh, a retractable connection for LNG vessels. Uh, and then on the right side, right hand side, we have a cable dispenser for ferries. 
and uh, also uh, below uh, a semi-fixed uh, cable con uh, connection installed basically on, on, the, on the Quay as an extension cord. So many different systems uh, are available on the market, uh, but uh, what do all these systems have in common is that they all need uh, a, a cable, a shore connection cable. And uh, I'm coming back here to what, uh, to what Jana says. Uh, it might seem that the cable is, uh, uh, is not uh, a demanding environment for, for, for the cable, but I can tell you this is not the case because we cannot uh, limit uh, our, um, uh, we, we do not have only one solution or one technology. We have uh, such a wide spectrum that we need uh, to think about uh, all the ways that the cable uh, will be used and will be put under stress by different kind of uh, environmental conditions. And uh, the good thing is that uh, for all these systems, uh, we uh, we have just one cable type that can be used for, for all these kind of technologies. And uh, I will show you in the next two slides uh, what we are talking about. Um, I said one, uh, one cable, uh, different technologies, one cable, which is uh, the Protolon SC. SC stands for short connection. Uh, we do, however, have uh, uh, different voltage ranges. So the first uh, uh, cable that I'm showing you here is a medium voltage cable. Medium voltage cables uh, uh, for uh, uh, cruise liners uh, or for container vessels are usually uh, either, um, or let's say the the electrical systems are uh, usually on 6.6 .6 kV or operated on 11 kV. So to cover this range, we have cables that uh, uh, we have um, medium voltage cables that uh, cover the range from 10 kV to 20 kV. And uh, but the construction of these cables are pre is pretty much the same. What changes is the dimensions, of course. And uh, they all have, uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, three power cores in the center um, that are made of flexible bare copper conductor class five. Class five is an indicator uh, that uh, uh, the, the copper conductor is highly flexible. So it's suitable for, for bending, is suitable for, for continuous reeling application and so on and so forth. And what we have then around the copper conductor is a, uh, is a triple layer uh, with an inner semiconductive, uh, an insulation layer, and then an outer semiconductive. This is the classic uh, design of uh, uh, a typical medium voltage cable. Then in one intersize, uh, we have uh, uh, the, the, the ground core, so, which is serving uh, as a protective earth also made of a uh, flexible bare copper conductor class five uh, with a semiconductive layer. And then in the other interstice, this is quite interesting here, we have uh, uh, a composite, uh, composite element made uh, of optical fibers and control cores. So we have in only one bundle uh, combined uh, uh, opti optical glass fibers and uh, uh, standard uh, uh, copper control cores. And this is used uh, then for uh, transmit uh, both signals, uh, but also data at a high rate. Um, then around uh, the, uh, the core stranding, we have a first sheath of, uh, uh, of uh, a rubber material based on EPR rubber. And here it is important uh, to have uh, a, a water barrier. Um, because uh, uh, we know that moisture or even uh, water is present uh, in, in ports, of course. Uh, so what we need to, to achieve here is, or to avoid, is that any water and any moisture enters into the cable. Otherwise, this can be uh, dangerous uh, from the, the electrical point of view. So the combination of uh, the choice of combination between the inner and the outer sheath, this makes uh, uh, the, uh, the real um, difference if the cable is water resist resistant or not. In this, case, in this case, we have a combination uh, of uh, inner sheath based on EPR rubber and an outer sheath based on CPE rubber. And this, outer layer provides both the water protection, 
but also it is abrasion resistant and uh, resistant uh, to, uh, of course, to UV, but also to the mechanical uh, stress that is related, uh, correlated uh, with the typical reading operation, for, for example. Um, in this case, so we need a tough outer sheath that uh, will protect the cable from getting damaged uh, through dragging and reeling the cable or on, uh, uh, on the reeling system. So this is uh, the typical design of uh, a medium voltage cable. Um, we do have uh, then this design also uh, in, in a low voltage uh, configuration. And the low voltage system looks um, slightly different. Uh, we also have here uh, power cores, also made of uh, flexible copper conductor class five with EPR insulation. In this case, since we are in the low voltage, we don't need uh, semiconductive layers. So we only have an insulation layer here. Uh, in the interstices, uh, we have two ground cores, also made of flexible copper conductor class five. And then in the third interstice here, we have uh, a combined element uh, um, with uh, four control cores or even higher if, uh, if the request of the customer uh, is different. And in this case, in this configuration, we don't have fiber optics. Um, but again, this is uh, uh, a choice of, uh, of the customer or a choice of the, the, the system where we are uh, delivering our cables to. Um, then for the inner sheath and the outer sheath, here we have the same materials. The only thing that changes is the, uh, is the color of the outer jacket. Typically, because uh, a red color is connected connected to danger, so this is typically used for medium voltage cables, while other colors like black or yellow is used for low voltage cables. So in this case, the choice of a black uh, outer jacket uh, also based on CPE rubber, and as I said before, water and abrasion resistant, whilst uh, the inner sheath is water resistant, uh, so that we have a perfect uh, um, uh, water sub submersibility of this cable. So the, ca the cable can be perman permanently laid underwater if the, the requirements uh, are, are such. And then we move on to the next slide uh, to summarize the, the main features of these cables. The fir first feature that I want to mention, this is, so this is very important. Um, all these cables that I just uh, showed you uh, are all compliant uh, uh, to the international standards. Uh, and the international standard for show connection, connection system is the IEEE 8005. It is definitely important that we, uh, that we are compliant to this standard, not only from the design point of view, but also from the testing point of view to guarantee that uh, uh, our cable uh, do have uh, and maintain a certain quality level throughout uh, the, the, the production process and throughout the years as well. To do so, we also, uh, we also uh, had the support of uh, Bureau Veritas in this case, who also tested independently the cable and certified these cables uh, as being according, according uh, to the IEEE 8005. Um, the next thing, uh, which is quite important is uh, that the cable has to be suitable for all vessel types, regardless uh, if we're talking about container ships or cruise vessels uh, or row row or row packs vessel and so on and so forth. Why is that? Uh, as I showed you before, um, we have different technologies, but the cable is the same. So for this reason, the cable needs uh, need to be somehow, uh, uh, need, to, need to be used uh, or, must be used uh, for different ships uh, coming into the port. And uh, then uh, the next important point uh, is the fact that uh, the cable is designed for reading application, for reading operation, but also is therefore also suitable for semi-fix systems. Um, the reading application is the, definitely the most demanding application that we have in this field uh, because the cables are then uh, uh, being reeled on and reeled off quite often, maybe a couple of times a day, uh, also subject to, uh, to tensile strength or to tensile force. So this is definitely uh, the, the application that the, 
where that we need to meet in order to uh, make sure that the cable is suitable for this kind of environment. And then everything else will be basically a class lower in terms of uh, mechanical stress onto the, onto the cable. Uh, definitely one important point to mention is that the cable uh, needs to be highly flexible and mechanically robust. And this is to guarantee high reliability uh, over the course of the, the lifetime of the systems. And then of course, since we're talking about uh, an outdoor environment, uh, uh, the cable needs to be resistant to UV, ozone and moisture. And also an additional point uh, where we are the only one on the market uh, offering this kind of feature is uh, the, uh, the permanent Im immersion in water. So the cable can be for the entire lifetime, be immersed in water without any restriction. And as mentioned already before in the, in the previous pre presentation from, uh, from Jana, this cable can be also delivered <coughs> with uh, pre-mounted plugs or terminations on request uh, according to the, the, the customer specification. So summarizing uh, our catchphrase here uh, in, for this kind of application is just uh, shut off uh, and just float. So with Prismian shore connection cables, you, just, you can just shut off the engines and float and, uh, and the cable will provide energy and that transmission uh, to the ship while adverting. So uh, Proton Shore Connection, it is the perfect choice for medium voltage and also low voltage connection systems for this kind of application. And the cable will uh, uh, provide energy, but also data communication to the vessel. Uh, so at the same time, the diesel engines uh, can be turned off, saving fuel, pollution, reducing carbon emissions and noise. And everything uh, that we do is compliant uh, to the in industry standards. Uh, so in this case, the IEEE 8005, Bureau Veritas certified and suitable for permanent immersion, immersion in water. So this is uh, everything I had to, to tell you today. And uh, these are our contact uh, uh, data if you want to reach to us. And then uh, now I leave the word back to uh, Antoine.